Okay, we're ready to set up the pointing machine and start carving. The first time I encountered pointing in a book, it was a wonderful book by Melvina Hoffman. Um, I had a surprisingly hard time grasping what is basically a very simple idea. The basic principle is that you have three known points on your original model. You can see them in, in this picture. The, uh, uh, there's one at the top that sort of uh, fits into a socket at the top of her head, and then there's two in that wooden bar um, uh, at the bottom. And uh, that pointing frame is really just sitting there. It, it sits in that um, uh, the top uh, connection, sits in the little hole in the top of the model, and the bottom two sit in those uh, uh, sockets in the front in the wood. And attached to that simple frame that can always be taken off and put back in exactly the same place, uh, you can fasten on a, a system of arms that's sort of, well, at least on this one, bolt together to allow you to come at any point on your sculpture from a variety of angles. Now if you notice there's a pointer that's just uh, almost touching uh, a spot just at the base of her neck. Um, there's bonus points if you know what that spot is called, that little dent um, at the very bottom of your neck. And that pointer, if you notice, uh, can slide out. It's got a stop. That, thing, that square sort of block at the back is a stop that you can adjust. Uh, so that you that pointer just slides in, and you just get it, you know, a couple of millimeters above the surface, and you lock that little block down, and now you can pull that pointer out. You've indexed uh, a particular point in space now, and you can always uh, uh, take this frame off the model and uh, put it back on and slide that pointer back in, and it'll land to the millimeter exactly where you had set it before. Of course, the object of the exercise is not to be able to replace the frame on the model, but to be able to place that same frame on the block uh, in three corresponding holes and uh, then be able to find that point um, on the sculpture you're going to carve. So basically what you do is you, you hang the frame on the block in the, in the corresponding three holes and you put the pointer back in and hopefully it will bump into solid stone. Um, it, it won't go all the way into where it was before. And then it, you're going to chisel away or drill, drill away uh, the stone under the pin until it will just slide in far enough to just kiss the stone. And at that point you have now located precisely the, that, that point on your finished sculpture. The fly in the ointment is that our block actually looks like this at this point. I have not yet uh, gotten enough dead stone stripped off it to uh, find those three holes and, and drill them in. So I'm going to have to uh, go over this block and chip away all the bad stone and decide exactly how the sculpture is going to be oriented in it and then uh, I'll, I'll have to I'll carve the spots where I want to put the, the three points. The stone is shabby enough as it turns out that I can't really do it from one of the more or less square sides of it. So I'm actually uh, going to cut sort of a diagonal face um, uh, on it. So the, that sort of striated side will be on one edge, and the far corner will be the other edge, and, and we'll have a big flat area in between. I really uh, actually kind of like using the hand punch, but uh, you can see I'm going to get bored with it. and, and pull out the, uh, the pneumatic sculptor's hammer. And so I'm giving that a shot here, and it, it, it's working. It's, it's not great. This, this is a, a, a half-inch model. That means the piston is a half-inch, which is on the smaller end for these trowel and holden uh, uh, handles. So it's not that fast. But now, now i got the big guns here. This is, uh, this is the cheapo from Home Depot. And, uh, that really blasts some stone off. Um, and I sort of feel like I've gotten the, the hang of this stone now. I know I know what the bad parts are like, and so I, I can I feel a little freer to just take a power tool and start blasting it off.
the uh, pneumatic hammers make a prodigious amount of noise, but um, the big one is actually fairly low frequency, and low frequency noise isn't as hard on your ears. The uh, smaller, uh, fancier one is uh, moves at a higher frequency, uh, and it doesn't seem quite as loud, but it's putting out high frequency noise, which is considerably harder on the person's ears. And actually, even just the hammer, just taking a hammer and banging on that chisel, it doesn't sound loud overall, but each ping is actually very high-pitched and very energetic. So you could actually go deaf just beating on the uh, chisel with a hammer without even using pneumatics. So I, I highly recommend uh, earmuffs when you're doing this. Um, I just bought a pair that has a radio in it, so I can sit here and listen to NPR all day while I, while I bang away on this stuff. So I've got most of the uh, uh, the bad stone off now, and uh, I'm, uh, I, I've really cut away the, the probably well over half of the block. But uh, but now I'm I'm just about down to where I can see where to uh, where to make the flat front of it and put the holes for the uh, uh, for the copying frame. So uh, and it's kind of touch and go though. The, the, I didn't know that so much of this block was bad, and it's really, it's going to be kind of thin. It's going to be a rather different piece than I originally imagined. Because it's going to be a fairly thin panel with a, uh, uh, with a girl on it. It's, and I was sort of thinking of her as being just uh, a surface on the face of a, of a more of a solid block. But, you know, it's, uh, it's what the stone was. So. accordingly. And now I think I'm almost down to the point where I'm going to start putting that, uh, um, that the flat front on it so that I can, uh, can make those holes. Stripping off the bad stone is done now, so it's just worth glancing at the floor to see what um, the chips all look like. Lots of big pieces, you know, there's a certain amount of dust and little powdery fragments, but most of it is substantial chunks, and that's what you want. You don't want to waste all day sort of producing powder. So now, uh, uh, this is the, the sound stone now. So I've, I've, I've just sort of got a flat front on it, and I'm um, uh, going to make those two holes level as they are on the other one. This is one of the advantages to making everything plumb and level, is that it makes it easier to reproduce later. It's not logically necessary, but in practice it makes everything easier. I've got the little pneumatic hammer out now to flatten off that front. Um, uh, pneumatics are, you know, they're, they're okay for the uh, punching off large amounts of stone, but they're just the greatest when it comes to things like using a claw chisel because it hits it like I don't know three thousand times a minute and uh, and it, the stone just flies off when you're using claw chisels. Um, you know you would have to tap it three thousand times to, to do the equivalent amount of work. So um, uh, they really can't be the value cannot be overstated for this this sort of thing. So there we go. Now we're down to the um, uh, uh, exactly where we're, we're going to drill those uh, two holes in the bottom, and uh, uh, I'm going to measure them uh, and drill them. I don't think I have a clip of me actually drilling it, because it's just drilling two little quarter-inch holes. This picture is from a little later in the process, but there's the two holes. This pin ran all the way to the backboard on the model, but here if you look at it, you see just how far uh, out from the stone it was. It's like six or eight inches. So this defines one corner of a whole big block of stone that I can cut out uh, all the way down to the backboard. So I know that it's sort of flat uh, above and to the right of where the pin goes in. So really I'm just rudely carving it all out. And remember at this point you're not trying to go too close. You know, half an inch away is fine. I, I just want to get away the bulk of the stone so that I can uh, uh, 
have a, a modest amount to go through when I start uh, taking lots of points. And that sort of strategy gets finer and finer as you go along. Uh, so at the very end, you might be working down to a 32nd of an inch uh, of your finished surface, uh, 16th of an inch or whatever, but um, you're, all, you're only a very shallow amount of stone to go through to, uh, to get to that uh, final point. So I, I get the bulk of the, of the stone I don't care about off of this thing. It's really just a, a process of picking these sort of key points where I can uh, take out a large amount of stone um, around a given point without having to worry about uh, uh, too much detail. So, you know, I'm just sort of choosing a point and setting up the, uh, the pointing machine and then taking a, a big sort of rectangular block of stone out and that that situation is going to get more and more refined as uh, as you know, as the outside gets closer to the finished surface it's funny I keep going back to the manual punch uh, it, you know it's not that much slower and it's uh, it's really a lot more pleasant to use so I guess I could uh, uh, do something in two days with the manually and one day with the uh, pneumatics, but it would be a miserable day of loud, loud noise and getting hit in the face with eight chunks of stand. But this 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 clips along pretty good. It's surprising how fast you can uh, you know, get stand with this thing. So I'm just iterating this process, uh, uh, you know, picking key areas where I can easily take off a lot of stone for a little bit of measurement and a little bit of thought and then just see here's her face and now I, I took a couple of key measures you see there's one hole I drilled instead of chiseling I drilled a hole where at sort of at the key point at the back of her neck uh, you can see just a little dark dot and now I'm bringing her face down um, uh, I've took a measurement so I know about how far I can go down before I have to really start carefully measure and then uh, uh, so you can almost see her head starting to form it was sort of her hair is sort of up at the far uh, upper left hand side of it I'm just going to keep on doing this and you can see the first uh, hints of, of what it's going to look like starting to uh, emerge a little bit um, it should end up looking very much like the model but um, you can sort of see it starting to emerge now. Um, and I'm still taking uh, very, very coarse points. But um, pretty soon now, I'll be getting up to the point where I'm, you know, air, some of these areas are within an inch, say, of the finished surface. And at that point, I'm going to shift to a new strategy. And that new strategy is going to be to find um, sort of polygons and lines of points where I can connect. Um, sort of connect the dots to create a, a, a piece of the finished surface or a piece of something very close to the finished surface. And here we are with a lot of stone uh, chopped away and a lot left to go. Um, some of that, uh, some features are still completely uh, buried in stone, like her arm. There's a row of uh, dots down the right side, and those are all on the top surface of her arm, so her arm is still embedded in the stone, uh, but you see where we're going with this. And what you see here are actual dots that I've taken, like looking from her tip of her shoulder to sort of her collarbone near where the, her, uh, the neck muscle comes into the uh, sternum, it's the uh, sternocleidomastoid, I believe. And, uh, uh, and you can see that that forms almost a straight line in space. So I took those two points, and I'm going to actually just find them rather precisely on the on the block, and then cut a line, just carve a straight line there. And then I'll know where that line is. But, but the the lines say the line up right behind uh, uh, her neck and right behind where the bun on her hair is. 
Uh, they're cruder. I'm just doing that to get stone out of the way. And here's another example of doing that. Like uh, if you look up at uh, up at her upper left shoulder there, you can see that there's a line that's almost a straight line down to just above her breast, and that's another line I can I, I can take those two points and then sort of cut uh, the stone away to have a, a line there, and then there's one that's a little further closer to her breast, and there's sort of a zigzag, and th those things all form almost straight lines. Um, uh, there's another one. Uh, I think from uh, the rib above the breast to go straight across a sort of a straight line there, and you can see I've taken those points. So um, they still don't look like much on the model, but each of these dots is, is uh, uh, the location of each of these dots, I'm down to within a half inch or so of the finished surface, and now I just take a drill, and, and I'll, I drill into uh, where that dot is going to be. So I'm just down uh, to where my pointer will slide all the way in. And this is exactly what we were just looking at on the model. Uh, each of those little round drill holes terminates just where the tip of that pointer um, is fully extended. So there's a, uh, you can s the two of them aren't even drill holes, two of them there are just indicated as black pencil dots because I hadn't started using the drill there. I just uh, I was just dotting them. But I found the drill is better because you can't lose the hole. And that line of, vertical line of holes is uh, up her right arm uh, on the surface, on the front of her arm. So uh, I'll be drilling some a couple inches to the uh, left side of that. So to down to the back background so that that'll, that'll define the edges of her arm. And if you notice, I've, I've sort of honeycombed away this stone up there that's sort of right where her neck and shoulder and stuff come together. You have to be super careful doing that. It seems like uh, a good thing to do, but actually uh, you run a real risk when you do that, that uh, because you drive a chisel or a punch into one of those holes, you have tremendous expansive power, and you can actually split your whole stone that way accidentally. So you, if you're going to honeycomb it away like that, you have to then really just kind of crumble that stone away. You can't get in there and drive a, a chisel in there. Anyway, that's a pretty much a good place to stop here, I think. Um, next time we do one of these, we'll be actually... Uh, uh, really producing some finished surfaces on this, I hope. And that should be exciting. So I'll uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.